Hello, friends. Wolves give people mixed feelings. In some cultures, they are treated with great respect. In others, they're disliked for their tendency to attack livestock and for the danger they pose to humans. So what kind of animal is it really? A ferocious predator or a loyal friend? The friendship that develops between a wolf and a dog is a very unusual phenomenon and it's always very poignant. It seems to have some incomprehensible inner energy. These animals are so different in character and behavior and so used to seeing each other as enemies that every time we come across photos depicting such an unusual friendship, we just want to keep looking at them forever, as if they were some kind of a miracle. More often than not, wolves can tolerate dogs, allowing them to come close, but tender feelings between a dog and a wolf are rare, which is what makes this incident so special. German photographer and artist Tanja Escani gave us one of the best pictures of a dog-wolf friendship. First, Tanja took into her home a wolf pup that was saved from certain death. Although he was born in the reserve, his mother couldn't feed her offspring. Two pups had died while Tanja took in the third one. Then, Tanja's dog gave birth to 11 puppies. She couldn't find a new home for one of the puppies, so it ended up spending four months living together with the wolf pup. Thus, Norin the wolf and Attila, the German pointer puppy, became friends. They ate, slept, and played together all the time. The puppy and the wolf pup became true friends. However, the wolf grew up and needed more freedom. Thus, Norn was sent to the Lüneburg Nature Reserve to live in a pack of wolves. But the story didn't end at that. The two friends still met once in a while. They still love playing together and they still have tender feelings for one another. Our story doesn't have any video or photo evidence. This legend was started by people who witnessed it, and it then spread by word of mouth until someone shared it online. This story takes us back to the 30s of the last century. A family of three lived in one of the Russian villages. Husband, wife, and their son were happy living there, since they had the most important thing, their love for each other. But one day, a disaster fell upon the family. Somehow, the house caught fire in the middle of the night, and being made of wood, it burnt down in an instant. Unfortunately, the husband and the son died in the fire. The woman was working the night shift, and when she came home, the house had already completely burned. All that was left was the yard dog. The large, shaggy black dog with a white spot on its chest had miraculously survived. He tried to run into the burning house to help, but he couldn't do anything, and his people died. The woman nursed the barely alive dog back to health. The dog paid the woman back with his unconditional love and loyalty, replacing her lost family. Unable to live in the village where the tragedy had happened, she asked the chairman of the collective farm to appoint her to replace the eldest forester, who had been looking to leave his post for a long time. The man refused to do it at first. Having a woman live alone, deep in the forest full of wolves and bears, was very unconventional. But the woman was persistent and got her way. Thus, they went off to live together in the woods, the woman and her dog. At first, the chairman came to visit often, checking up on the woman, but he soon realized that the new forester was doing well and left her alone. The first winter passed, but then in early spring, the dog began to run off into the forest for a long time. The woman didn't know what to think, anxiously awaiting her pet's return. She was afraid to lose him since the dog was all she had left and she'd have no reason to live without him. Then, one day, her four-legged friend did not come home alone. A young she-wolf stood at the edge of the forest, not far from the house. This friendship explained the dog's disappearing act and log absences. The young family settled in the doghouse, and it all would have been fine, but the she-wolf didn't want to have a human around. As soon as the woman tried to approach the doghouse, the wolf would immediately hide, grinning and growling at her. One night, the dog scratched at the door and whined softly. The woman ran out into the yard, not knowing what to think. The dog led her to the doghouse. The she-wolf was lying on the mat and breathing heavily. The owner climbed inside and, speaking in a gentle voice, began to palpate her. The wolf was weakened by the disease and didn't resist, only whimpering softly. All bones were intact and the mouth was clean. So what happened? The woman didn't know what to do. The worried dog lay next to his friend, looking hopefully at the mother. Unable to just do nothing, 
the woman picked up the wolf and somehow managed to bring her inside the house. The house was warm, but the woman still covered the animal with a blanket, and the dog lay down at the entrance, looking at his wife, not even blinking. By morning, the woman was exhausted and fell asleep. She woke up from the sound of someone whining. Opening her eyes, she saw a yellow wolf gaze. The wolf was lying down, curled up in a ball. The woman touched her nose gently. It was wet. Happy that it all worked out, the woman fell asleep. And then the puppies were born. Two strong and beautiful boys. Real wolves. Only their height and color they got from their father, and the same white spot on the chest. But the family's joy was quickly followed by sorrow. The dog died. The woman buried him right there, under a large birch tree. Having lost a son and a husband, the two females cried at the grave all night long. The she-wolf didn't leave the woman. Soon the village people got used to her and called her nothing but daughter-in-law. And so they lived together. But human life isn't endless. One day, as the chairman was riding towards the forester's house, a wolf suddenly ran up to his horse. The man barely managed to stay in the saddle. He got very scared, but then he recognized the daughter-in-law. She was rushing about the road and whining. Sensing that something was wrong, the man urged the horse. He found the woman in the house, but she was already cold. The paramedic who was called said that her heart had stopped. They buried her in the village cemetery. During the funeral, the chairman kept seeing the backs of three wolves, the silver one, the she-wolf, and two black ones, her sons. That night, the whole village couldn't sleep, kept up by the wolves howling. What happened to the wolf and her pups, people asked. They went into the forest. People say that for the rest of her life, the she-wolf didn't let a single wolf come near her. And three years later, she was found dead at the dog's grave. The chairman buried her next to him. The pups grew up and have probably become pack leaders. There's no other explanation for why the packs led by wolves with black fur and white spots on their chest never attacked people and livestock. And the hunters didn't touch them either. They remembered the faithful dog and his girlfriend. Their skin is black, but their soul is white, people used to say about them. Whether you believe this story or not, it's up to you. But the fact remains, wolves are one of the most loyal animals. They become strongly attached to their pack mates, communicating with the help of facial expressions and body movements. The wolf's language brings the pack together and helps them understand each other. And to express their affection, they lick each other and rub their faces. And that's all for today, friends. Share your thoughts about this episode in the comments. Like the video and share it with your friends. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.